Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, I want to talk about the magic of momentum. At the end of this podcast, you're going to find your momentum. What is momentum, you say? Momentum is something that you absolutely know the definition of. You know it when you see it. In a nutshell, momentum is defined as the strength or force that something has when it is moving, that allows something to continue or to grow stronger or faster as time passes. Everything is about momentum. If you have jumped off a building and you start to visualize that you didn't jump off the building, Momentum will still take you to its ultimate end. Momentum is the key force pushing you towards your goal or taking you away from it. Everything is in motion. Momentum makes it much easier to create change. If you have to lose 50 pounds, the second 10 are easier to lose than the first 10. It's easier to keep a boulder rolling than it is to get started. My favorite place to witness momentum in action is in competitive sports. Just the other day, I was watching the Minnesota Vikings-Indianapolis Colts game, which at halftime, the Vikings had trailed 33 to nothing. Now, I know that many of you might not be a big sports fan, and I'm not as much either, but I love to watch momentum in competitive sports. So the Vikings are trailing 33 to nothing. I was interested because this is a pretty good team. So, and it's 36 to 7 with like 4 minutes and 59 seconds left. And then the momentum shifts. They rush for a touchdown. They catch another when you're watching the game, you can tell when the momentum shifts. You can tell the other team is always making the better play, doing the smarter thing. You can always see which team has the momentum. I've watched so many basketball games where a team is down by 25, the other team starts heating up. All these metaphors that we get from sports, the team is heating up, they have the momentum. It's interesting because a lot of really good coaches can see when the momentum has shifted and they'll take a timeout. It's a common part of the game. Take a timeout, stop the momentum. So there's momentum in your life. And if you can find the momentum towards your chief definite aim and the reality that you want to create, it's so much easier. It's so much more powerful. Newton taught us that everything is in constant motion. If you look at successful people, you'll see that they're always looking for new tactics to move closer to their goals and build on their accomplishments. I believe the key to their success is momentum. Newton's first law of motion, the law on inertia, states that every object in a state of uniform motion tends to remain in that state of motion unless an external force is applied to it. So in short, there is a natural tendency for a moving object to keep moving unless an opposing force interferes with it. If you can get your life moving towards your goal, your reality moving towards your goal, nothing can stop it. Every object in a state of uniform motion tends to remain in that state of motion. It's a natural law. So we see momentum all the time in sports and in life and you've experienced momentum perhaps you're working on a project and you gain momentum for some people they call it in the flow and i believe the study of the flow is the same thing as momentum it can feel like an external force is acting upon you moving you towards your goal and you may be facing stuff in your life that has been created by the momentum of your past we're constantly facing the momentum of our past with unpaid bills or forgotten commitments that we've made to others. We're constantly in a state of some sort of momentum, either towards our inevitable death or towards our inevitable life. Everything is momentum. 
So how can we use the magic of momentum to aid us in seeing that our wishes are fulfilled? There are a variety of ways that we can create momentum. I'm going to list ones that I came up with that I have been able to apply in my life towards momentum. Just the word momentum fascinates me, brings me for some reason to a movie that I remember watching with Lewis Gossett Jr. and Terry Hatcher called Momentum. There's also an amazing series that you can find on HBO called Momentum Generation, where people are taking a deep dive in to the world of surfing. Surfing is all about momentum. The word momentum is fascinating and there's some amazing books that you can read on momentum that I can recommend. For the physics of momentum, read Momentum by Sarah Allen. There's also The Magic of Momentum by Stephen Guys and Empower Your Momentum by Scott Allen. Those have some amazing description of, of how to use momentum. Another amazing book is Evan Carmichael's book, Momentum. Everybody's talking about momentum and the question is why? Because once you understand its nature, then you can utilize this force for your own good. There's so many amazing things that you can do to create momentum. So I would say the number one thing to start the process of creating momentum is to make a commitment. Momentum is more than just moving. Creating momentum starts with a direction. And a commitment is a direction. You're making a commitment to yourself. Momentum is a mental shift and it can be a force for change in your life. So make a commitment to yourself to take one step closer to your goals. Nothing will change without a commitment to break away from your norm. That gets the boulder moving. There's key fundamental areas where you can shift your momentum. That's in your mindset, that's in your actions, that is in your habits and how you strategize to use these momentums. Humans intuitively understand and respect physical momentum. We don't walk in front of moving buses, but human momentum is not like physical momentum. In human life, we can tell the physical objects that are moving People have let a single comment or instance of failure tear their life down, creating a momentum that destroys their life. Others have turned one viral video into a lucrative career and they've followed the momentum of that. Unfortunately, most people think of positive momentum in human life as a string of successes and that's not true. Momentum though, it may be the result of momentum I mean, in sports, such as when a team goes on a scoring run, a winning streak is nice, but it only lasts as long as the force driving it persists. Momentum in sports can change in an instant with just one shot, one swing of the bat, one big play. A team can completely change the momentum of a game. What does this momentum mean if it can be so easily reversed in one play? It means that it isn't as concrete or or strong as physics momentum. You won't see a bus going north at 60 miles per hour instantly change to go south at 60 miles per hour. It takes force, energy, and time to reverse its momentum and turn it into its opposing momentum. That's why coaches take timeouts in basketball when the other team goes on a run. Understanding momentum helps us to accurately predict our behavior in the future. Real human momentum has force behind it. It doesn't rely on us thinking or feeling a certain way to bring results. Momentum matters more than you or I can fathom. Every person's primary aim should be to generate positive momentum in areas that matter to them. Positive momentum makes it easier to take positive actions take positive actions, then make it easier to take additional positive actions. 
It's a compounding snowball of goodness when you have positive momentum. Meanwhile, negative momentum makes negative actions easier to take and can compound in that direction. So the secret to success, joy, happiness, love is simple. Make it easier to succeed than to fail. Momentum doesn't merely do that. It does so exponentially. Take for a moment HVS3 or HE0437-4539, a hypervelocity star cruising through space right now at 1.6 million miles per hour with a mass nearly nine times greater than the sun. It's bigger and faster than our sun and it's moving 1.6 million miles per hour. This is a meta comparison because the star's power lies in its preposterous momentum. A scientist can compute this star's momentum with numbers, but what human can comprehend their real world meaning? To build a plane that can fly, the Wright brothers had to learn about the mechanics of flight, engines, physics, propellers, aerodynamics. The Wright brothers had to separate the principles of flight from their prior observational understanding of flight. To discover the magic of momentum, we must strip away our prior conversational understanding of it. As with the Wright brothers, we will unlock new possibilities by looking at the principles of momentum and finding those less intuitive truths. So the first step we have is to make that commitment to do something a commitment and a direction towards what you want. The first principle to understand is that you are most likely to do what you just did. That is always the short-term momentum. Repeat that. You are most likely to do what you just did. This humble sentence is the heart of momentum. With the mention of Newton's first law of motion earlier, you might wonder, why we talk about momentum instead of motion. Motion creates momentum and that momentum influences subsequent motion. You could say that momentum measures the power or oomph of motion in a particular direction. Momentum equals mass times velocity. Velocity equals direction plus speed. That's physics. But let's convert it into human momentum with reality creation. So for that, you change mass into power. The mass of a moving bus is like the power of a habit. Both are hard to stop once they get going. Habitual behaviors carry weight in your mind and natural preferences. Habits are neural pathways in the brain that act like rails. When the brain encounters a situation for which it has already developed a habitual response, the associated neural pathway fires. After that, it's usually autopilot with strategy or effort. You may divert from the rails or the habit. Otherwise, you're going on that predictable path. Habits are the known powerhouse of human behavior and they create momentum. If you accept the change of mass to power, that gives us three major factors of human momentum. That's power, direction, and speed. For human momentum, which of these do you think is the most important for generating and sustaining positive momentum forward into the reality that you want? Take a moment to think about it. First of all, we have the power of our actions. Secondly, the direction of our actions. And third, the speed of our actions. Stephen Guise advises that it's direction in his book, The Magic of Momentum. Direction. So you are making a commitment toward what it is that you want. You're making that commitment. That's the key beginning element. You don't have to do anything. It doesn't require any money. Now you can schedule a time for this change. You can look for inspiration. But I believe that making a commitment is aided by having a chief definite aim. One big thing that you want to do. You may have to tackle your fears towards making this commitment. The second thing to do to create momentum is to take the first step. Consider for a moment all that you've done. The situation will never be perfect. Your time is now. Just do it. Take that first step. 
Taking the first step does not require you to be proficient at what you're doing. It does not mean that you understand it or know it. I have found taking one bold action towards my goal starts the momentum. It can often be symbolic. So you want to write that book. You build momentum by writing a chapter of the book right now. Take some particular goal. Sometimes it means putting some money towards it. Put an extra $500 towards your goal, whatever it is. But you want to take that first step. If you've made a commitment, you've pointed yourself in the direction that you want to start the momentum. And then you take a step and that starts to move you towards what it is that you want to accomplish or do. Momentum is not created by taking a single action or making a single commitment. Remember the principle we talked about earlier. What you do now, you'll probably do again. Everything is repeated. So you want to create momentum. So the third step that I would recommend is to create a 30-day challenge. Pick something that you want to create and force yourself to do each day for the next month. It's a great way to build momentum. When you do something every single day, I find that that's when the magic starts to happen. Usually it takes about 21 days to create a habit. You can use this 30-day challenge to change a habit or create a new habit. So you've made the commitment, you've taken that first step, and then you have given yourself a 30-day challenge, whatever that is. Here is where some really important stuff comes up. Your mindset and your energy. You have to eliminate your energy drains as you go along this process. Energy drains are those things that drag you down, that slow your momentum. Things that recharge your energy can be anything that inspires you and puts you in a good mood, like a room in your house, a place to relax, an activity or a person. Spend more time doing the things that give you energy. And learn about the things that are draining you and try to find ways to eliminate that. You need energy to create momentum. We understand from physics that energy equals momentum. So you start to understand what kind of energy blocks you may have when you undergo whatever 30-day challenge that is. You then have to learn to remove your fears. The greatest source of procrastination and the thing that's limiting people from gaining momentum is often a deep-seated fear, a fear of success, change, failure, ridicule, the unknown. You must eliminate your fears. And in the process of doing the 30 days, you're going to encounter blocks or obstacles. Maybe you'll procrastinate. Maybe you won't perform on one of those 30 days. If you are insistent that you gain the momentum that you want, you must eliminate your fears, become aware of them, and take a daily step to remove your fears by asking yourself every day, what would I do today if I were not afraid? You must have the mindset in order for momentum. Now, Evan Carmichael says, you must believe that great ideas flow through you, that ideas come to you when you're feeling bold and are the right ones for you. And you must make big decisions with your heart, small ones with the head. And he inspired me with the question, what would be the version of me with momentum? So I asked that, what would be a version of you that has momentum? Here's what I can explain of a moment where I felt like I had momentum in my life. So you can relate. I wake up, my video's doing well. My book has sold well. I have comments from people that are telling me how fantastic my channel is. I am so excited and alive. Everything seems to be working out for me. One of my biggest idols is in regular contact with me and I can feel the momentum. All the little things that I had done in the past are now paying out the consequences. Seeds that I planted. Oftentimes, momentum is a result of the seeds I've planted in the past. 
When I have momentum, motivation is easy. Motivation is very easy. Momentum takes over the need for motivation. And that's a huge benefit. All my resistance goes away. My strategies are validated. I'm happy. Whatever I start to do when I'm in a state of momentum, it seems to work out perfectly. Once you've completed a 30-day challenge of any kind, whatever manner it is, maybe you wanted to create a new video every day or write every day or paint every day or work towards a job that you want to get, whatever it is, you can evaluate how you did in those first 30 days. What I would recommend is that you practice one thing every day after the 30 days are done. It creates momentum in your life to choose one activity or habit and practice it daily. You create momentum when you meditate every single day of your life. One thing that people recommend is the 3% challenge. Making a game of your life and creating momentum through being just 3% better. If you write 500 words a day, write 600 words. If you produce one video today, produce one and a half videos tomorrow. If you make $100 this month from your website, make $120 next month. Each time you challenge yourself and achieve small wins with each small win and each daily activity that you do, you work your way towards a sort of tipping point. And that's what momentum is. It creeps up on you. And often its effects are realized like a delayed reaction. Anything that you do every day, you're going to get better at. And then you'll be able to refine the process. Don't wait until you're 100% ready. Evan Carmichael says that you need to be 2% ready. The 2% difference. We plan to be 100%, but take action on the first 2% so that you get the momentum that you need. Then there's the 595 rule, which is essentially you spend 5% of your time planning and 95% of your time doing. That's where momentum is created. It's important to remember that you're going to suck at the start. You're going to fail at the start. But if you never try or never start, nothing will ever happen. You have to start slow. It's a tiny little snowball. If you've ever watched a snowball roll down a hill, getting bigger and bigger. I've literally done that. I'm from Wyoming. I've watched a snowball roll down a hill and get bigger and bigger and bigger. It takes just the tiniest little thing and it's going to suck at the beginning. The snowball is going to be so small. Now, once you have the momentum, how do you keep it going? I believe that the key is having a morning routine in which you prime yourself each day towards your ultimate chief definite aim. This can be with the meditation. What I recommend doing is creating momentum through the wave of fortune or priming. You get super excited about something every single day. It gives you the energy that you need to push you forward. You visualize what you want and you take that little bit of time in the morning to push yourself towards what you want. It gives you the momentum in the day and it will, when done repeatedly, give you momentum throughout your life. So I ask you, when have you been in the force of momentum in a positive way. Do you remember a time when you had positive momentum on your side and what it felt like? You should remember this feeling and understand it. It's very important. Just remember that consistent action over time will kill resistance. At the beginning, when you take your first step, you will encounter resistance. That's why I recommend some sort of 30 day challenge. Over time, long-term momentum kicks in. You must understand that everything you do ripples exponentially. The ripple effect is the key thing to understand. It's hard to foresee or believe before and as it happens, and it's impossible to deny in hindsight. There are three ripples of momentum to consider with every action you take, the near term, the long term, and the adjacent areas. Every action ripples to create other thoughts, feelings, effects, and actions, which themselves can ripple. Look over your life and see how 
tiny actions that you take end up rippling into larger effects later on from momentum. Maybe you choose to spend time with the wrong person or try something dangerous just this once. Or you give this person one more chance. Or you ignore a subtle but clear red flag. Or maybe you do one more push-up every day. Or you make the choice to uplift someone. You take a smart risk. Or you choose to apply for a job or create a product or write a book. It can be as small as choosing to meditate for five minutes can create a ripple effect. And you are the product of that rippling effect. The question then is how to reverse negative momentum. The way to reverse negative momentum in the short term is as simple as it is when driving a car. If you're going the wrong way, change your direction. We do that with the first step, making a commitment. Create positive momentum in a new direction. That's it. I believe that you can reverse momentum through visualization, through meditation, through the proper use of affirmation. When you put yourself in a state that is the opposite of whatever negative momentum that you've gained, you start to reverse this. Now, you may be in a situation where you've been drinking for a long time and you want to reverse that. That is certainly possible. And what we're trying to do is replace your old habit with the new habit. You start by every single day making a new change. At the beginning, it can be a 30-day commitment, but it really comes down to every minute, every second, every day, making that new change in your habits. You're going to get into a situation where the momentum will start to last and you'll notice it. The longer it lasts, the more powerful it becomes. Human momentum happens in the short term and the long term. If you've done something long enough to create long-term momentum and you're still generating short-term momentum, you're a juggernaut of momentum, unstoppable. Sustainability is critical. Anyone can generate momentum on a good day. It's the days that test us, the days we feel off, the days we feel discouraged that decide the sustainability of our momentum generation. For your momentum to survive, you must get your intentions straight. Intentions do not produce a one-to-one action result. Every abandoned goal speaks to that. We don't do everything we intend to do. We may do more than we intend to do. There is value in precise intention, but context is key. For example, planning to start your garden on Wednesday by buying seeds at 2 p.m. and planting them at 2.30 is more likely to succeed than planning to start your garden sometime or even tomorrow. Specificity and precision in intention are a double-edged sword in the same way that marriage is. The commitment tells you exactly what's expected and fulfilling it can create lifelong happiness. But if it's broken for any reason, you'd be better off having never made that commitment. Divorce rates are high, especially considering how unpleasant a thing it is. A commonly cited reason for divorce is that the couple grows apart. Two people who used to have a lot in common may be changed significantly as they aged and not in the same way as their partner. Broadly speaking, people divorce because they no longer find their spouse suitable for them. In the same way, when we set a goal, our circumstances can change later to make our original commitment seem unsuitable. Life is unpredictable and people change, which makes long-term commitments difficult, whether to people or pursuits or goals. The the solution to this may seem complicated, but it's actually straightforward, staring us in the face. If specific intentions are powerful and preferable to non-specific intentions, which are more easily ignored, but they're also susceptible to future uncertainty and change, we need to be specific in the short term and flexible about the methods we use for the long-term plans. One example of this comes to mind is Chipotle. I love going to Chipotle, but it was designed for people to go and show up and order the food and then go home. And then during COVID, they had to shut down. So their commitment had to change. So they focused on their delivery app. They adapted And then suddenly their long-term plans changed and they developed this wonderful new delivery service and their orders tripled and they adapted 
their own commitment. The fresher your intention is, the more likely it is to come true. Intentions that consistently generate momentum have three qualities. They align with a longer term goal or ideal. They are based on current information and they are doable. If we omit any of these, we lose momentum. If you play chess, you know there are times to retreat and times to attack. If your opponent moves their pawn, protected by another pawn, into an attacking position against your queen, you must move her to safety. In life, we will face many moments where the plan we had in mind is untenable. These are times to step back, to retreat. Our retreat, however, isn't like a weak-willed soldier in a war movie. It is like a chess grandmaster protecting the queen. Continue to use this momentum that you generate. And if you have to change or adapt, that's fine. When you carry full momentum, instead of just sporadic momentum here and there, by your daily actions and commitments, your visualizations and your goals, by clearing your energy and eliminating your fears, amazing things will happen for you. So make that commitment. Take that first step. Give yourself a 30-day challenge. And then adapt as you go along. Be specific with your intentions, but change them with strategy. And you will maintain this momentum into whatever it is that you want. Tell me how you have maintained momentum in your life. I would love to hear what strategies and ways that you've maintained momentum. Please put it in the comments so others can share with your particular techniques. I want you to declare with me, I have momentum towards my goals. I have momentum. I am moving with momentum. I am achieving my goals with momentum. Momentum is working for me. My reality is being created with momentum. Say those things and you will have the momentum. Every moment of every day is a chance to create momentum. Life's most powerful force. And if you feel stuck, then revisit what's going on in your life and start your momentum again, wherever you're at, and the magic will happen. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. Powerful, fourth density technologies. Images designed to magnetize and broadcast. Available at newearth.art. And welcome to the Reality Revolution.